Perfectly still, no movement. Patience is a big thing with gun dogs, so a lot of the time they're going to be sat still, they, they're not always going to be in action, and they've got to move under your instruction and at your convenience. Some of you that may own Spaniels will know how difficult it is to keep a Spaniel still at any one time. We're just loading up some traps now, these will expel dummies into the air. The other thing we're going to be using today is pigeons. Now please don't be worried, these pigeons come to no harm. They'll fly from here back to John's kennels, some miles away. We give each pigeon a name so we know which one it is and when we go back to the pigeon loft we'll be able to check they're all back there safely, which I'm sure they will be. The other thing we'll also be using today is a, a gun. Do not be alarmed, it only fires blanks. Although we will be pointing the gun at the pigeons, do not be alarmed. We will not be firing any shotgun cartridges, it's purely on blanks. You see how he dropped back to the dog just to reassure the dog that what she's doing is correct. And you might see he's just having a look at those two boxes in the middle there. They're the placement boxes. Now when we come to do that, John's going to take over the commentary because this is a, something that's been brought in from America. Only over the, really the last six months or so we've been experimenting with these boxes. And he's got a much greater knowledge of how these boxes work than I have, so he'll be doing the commentary with Shane assisting him, doing the handling. I'll be very interested to listen to it myself, in actual fact, to see how this works. You see there's things going on around Penny, but she still, still stays there, very quietly waiting, observing what's going on. Also setting up over there by the other bit of the cover what we call a bolting rabbit, which is basically a a dummy covered in a rabbit skin on a piece of elastic which effectively simulates a, a bolting rabbit. Now all this stuff is all possible for each and every one of you that's got a dog. As I say, you can go to John for lessons or come over and see us at the tent afterwards and if you've got a particular problem with your dog you feel you need a bit of a, a hand with, come and ask him and he'll give you his advice. So I was very keen on promoting young people. As you see, Shane comes in, only a young man. He also trained Joanna Blakely, who went on to compete in several field trials. Just sits the dog up nice and still. Everything done at the handler's pace, not the dog's pace. The dog's quite happy though, knows it's going to be doing something in a minute. It's quite happy to sit and wait. Now this dog went from and I'm not so much untrained, but a trained dog without competition to field trial champion with the space of three weeks. Enormous potential. Trained all along John's land. There goes the dummy up in the air. Dog sits, observes the dummy. Again, no movement from the dog. John calmly walks across. Until he gives that dog instruction to go and fetch it, the dog will remain still. Although it still observes what's going on, as it should do, it's being aware of the situation around it, it picks the dummy up to show the dog I can retrieve these as well as you can. Quietly walks back. Everything's done it very quietly. No sudden movements. When he speaks to the dog, it's, it's nearly a whisper. And that way it forces the dog to pay attention to him. Brings the dog towards him. Or as we're looking at bush, I think it might be something in there. Sits the dog up. Again. Shows the dog the retrieve. Not until he gives a command will the dog move. Walks away. Got to stop these dogs second guessing what you're going to say because if you do that, they'll be on, they'll be on the move before you've given the instruction, which is not always what you want. Walks around, quietly walks around. Points his gun. There's the shot. There's another shot. Dog sits perfectly still. Waits instruction. Then he reloads his gun. Nothing's ever done at the dog's pace, always at the handler's pace. Quietly sat there. And she's ready to go. Thinks to herself, come on mate. Come on boss, give me the give me the instruction, I'm ready. Walks her to heel. Get all part of the discipline. You need to get this basic ABC into the dog before you start anything, but certainly before you get her on game. Sends her out. If she's going to work that wind, the wind's coming from behind me, so she, she'll work it. 
She works around the box, she now starts working into the wind, and there she goes. Picks the dummy up, straight back to John. Oh, look at that, look at the delivery there. She sits there perfectly, patiently holds the dummy up for him to take it. These dogs work on scent, not on sight. They're looking for it. They're looking on the ground for scent. When they start hunting for something that's in cover, they're using scent and they use the direction of the wind to assist them. See, she's having a little look into that bush, thinks there might be something in there. Field trial champion. As her pet name is Penny. Dog originally come from Ireland. Look at the way she moves into that cover, searches it completely, he won't not. He won't move on to she's he's fully satisfied there's nothing in there. Then she moves in there. Enthusiasm, movement, speed. He's, oh there goes a pigeon. I think that one's Harry. Away he goes, that will go off back to John's kennels. Dog watches it away. Then perfectly still. No movement from the dog. Sits quietly and watches. Got to remember when you go, some of you that sometimes go shooting will often see that every, some people's dogs, they think everything that flies in the air or is shot belongs to them. And it's not the case, you've got to sit your dog up. And it's not until you give it the instruction to actually go and retrieve the bird, or the dummy in this case, should it move. Sits quietly there, reloads his gun. So waits patiently. And quietly gives it an instruction to carry on hunting. There it goes. Moving with style and grace. Thoroughly investigating everything. There goes the bolting rabbit. I don't think she saw that, but he bars a shot in the direction of the rabbit. Yeah. Sits perfectly still. Watches it away, the dummy's dropped. John, John gives it the structure to fetch the rabbit. A little bit confused, but this works out. Picks up the dummy and brings it back to John. These are just dummies with a rabbit skin wrapped around it. Just throws the dummy away, tells her to leave it, which she does. Comes back to him. Look at the enthusiasm on the dog's face. It can't wait to get going. Quite walks beside him. He sits the dog up. Now these dogs will have to, on a shooting day, will have to spend a considerable amount of time not actually doing anything, just patiently waiting for either the drive to finish or for the birds to come overhead. And the last thing you want is a dog that's agitated, moving about and difficult to control. Sends the dog back. It remembers that's called a memory retrieve. Picks it up swiftly straight back to John and look at the delivery. Gives up his retreat. Well, how about that then? Oh, what a cracking dog. Okay, what we're going to move on to now. Come on. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you'll have to bear with me that uh, this is the first time I've ever actually done a commentary. I find it very difficult to work the dogs and do a commentary at the same time. But the reason that, that I, I, I'm doing this commentary is because there's a new way of getting basic training into dogs. And because I'm doing training all the time for clients, I want to try and get the training done at a much quicker time. Now, you can see this dog. This is Shane, by the way. He helps me on weekends. He's very talented. And uh, he's going to show you how the boxes work. Now, to start with, we got this little young dog out, he's uh, seven months old, and he hasn't got a clue. You'll see that it, there's no discipline, it, it won't come to him, it won't go on the boxes, it, it's, it, it's completely uh, uh, oblivious to the boxes. Now, we'll put this dog away now, you can see that, that it's a complete idiot. Not the handler, the dog. Uh, so now Shane's going to put the dog away and he's going to bring another dog out. He's had two weeks 
of training on these boxes. Now, I'm not sure if I can get through to you people today how these boxes work, because although I'm using them, and I, I've done lots of research on it, it's come over from America, I still don't know how they work, but the dog almost seems to think that it's its own place and it's off the ground. The boxes have got to be a certain size, uh, 24 inches by 18, painted white on the outside and uh, uh, artificial grass on the top, AstroTurf. Now you can see straight away the difference between the first dog and the second dog. This dog was just as uh, 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 boisterous as the first dog, but immediately he's accepting sitting on these boxes. Uh, uh, I know he's on the lead, but it's different to the first dog. So just watch carefully. The, the, it, there's some psychological action in the dog's brain that the box is a safe area to be. And if I do it right, I'm on the box, that's where it all happens. Now, I've been training dogs for an awful long time. <laughs> it's my dog, obviously. Uh, so it's, it's come to me, right. Keep it on the lead, uh, Shane, for a minute. Now, I'm one that, uh, uh, I'm not an advocate of using treats. I didn't say that you have not got to use treats, but I can seem to do it without treats. Now, Shane here, uh, he's been coming to me for about three years, uh, most weekends, and he's learned an awful lot. Now, he has his own style of training, and he is using a lot of treats. I'm not going to stop him using treats, because that's his way of doing things. I don't use treats. But you'll see how some difficult dogs here, after this one, that by using the treats, he's got more advanced. Now, this dog is obviously not... I'm going to have to get out of the way, because... These dogs are with me uh, on a daily basis. Now, that dog is reacting to me, so I'm going to go right in the corner here, so I'm out of the way. Now, the next dog that he's bringing in is... is it, uh, it's a young dog. It's a uh, His name is Dag. A very, very boisterous dog. Very boisterous. But you will see how the difference between the first dog and the second dog now, because he's had more of it. He's accepting the fact that he's staying on that box, and you will see in a minute a perfect delivery. They, they actually give you a perfect delivery, because most people with gun dogs, they're always, the dog's running around them and, 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 and uh, won't give it to you, but you'll see with this dog, he's had more box training. He's nine months old, don't forget he's nine months old. Now look, even down to the fact that he's not going to go for that. So it's steadiness as well. And it's all down to the box. In my kennels, I, I, I have a block of kennels of about 12 dogs. And before I clean them out in the morning, I've got 12 boxes out and I set all the dogs on the boxes. And they're like gollywogs, they won't move. I've never been able to do that. So this is something new. Now look at the delivery on that dog. How can you get a delivery any other way than what he's doing? And that was a very, very boisterous dog. Even after throwing it now, there's some discipline because the box, he's even saying, no, you're not having it now. He's nine months old. I've never been able to do this with dogs at such a young age. But watch the delivery. <laughs> right, on the box, look at the delivery. You couldn't get a better delivery. So, how they work, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's something you've got to come to your own conclusion. Why is that dog staying there? I don't know. We've never pulled his ear, we've never uh, 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 made any uh, a gesture that he's got to do it. But, strange as it may seem, what we say when the dog goes on the box, we don't say sit, we say place. Now, I don't know why, why, why you say place, but that is how the Americans do it. But you see the discipline. Now he's off the boxes now. So what you're going to say, uh, you'll always have to have a box. Well, you won't because he's working this dog now off the boxes. It's only for young dogs. Now that is a very, very boisterous dog. But look at the delivery again. You could never get that if he hadn't started on the boxes. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for a nine-month-old dog. But he loves it. 
Right, now the next dog he's going to bring in is quite funny really because uh, you'll probably say, well, he's a gun dog trainer. He's, he's, Shane, just hold on a minute, let me explain about the dog. Now, uh, uh, I had a lady come from London, uh, a very wealthy lady, very nice lady, and uh, she brought a Cocker Spaniel in for me to train. Miss Cook, would you train my dog? Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, a little Cocker Spaniel, in fact, is here today. A little dog named Coco. And uh, uh, she said, also, she said, uh, would you train my Norfolk Terrier? And I thought, Christ, a Norfolk Terrier? You know, I'm a gun dog trainer. I don't want to train Norfolk Terriers. So, uh, because she left the dog with me, I thought, well, I'd better have a go at it. So, this little dog, you know yourself, anything involved in Terriers, they've only got two things on their mind. A, is to bugger off away from you, and B, kill something and bring it back. So, so, so this little dog, she wants to take it shooting. Uh, now, uh, I've said to Shane that uh, we have a bet on. If you can get this little dog to retrieve a goose, I'll give him 30 quid. Uh, the, the, legs, the legs on this dog are about an inch and a half long, so he's going to work around the boxes and show you what he's doing, but it, this dog, because it's a terrier, is more food orientated. So what we're saying is, you ain't going to get nothing out of this dog unless you get something out of it. Now this is a little terrier, and, and it's about nine months old. Now, back to the boxes again, why is he sitting there? Why? I, I can't answer it. I can't answer some of, some of the theories to it. But it's accepting it. It's his own little place. And in a minute, he'll, uh, we're doing lots of little... What else can I do with this dog? He's a tiny little dog. You know, his legs are only a, an inch and a half high. And we're going to get him to jump a, a little jump in a minute. So we're doing lots of things all to do with the boxes. But, but you see, it, it, the, the boxes aren't designed just for gun dogs. Pets, you can do it with pets as well. Look at that little dog. You couldn't get a terrier to stay there at that age. It's all to do with the boxes. So the boxes are a little bit magical in some way or another. So don't forget this little dog, his legs are only an inch and a half high. He's going he's gonna to have quite a job to, to do what he's doing with it. So, you know, it's, uh, to get a terrier to stay there is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm not so sure. I think my bet's probably fairly safe that it's going to retrieve a goose. I'm not quite sure about that. But she wants it as a gun dog. In fact, she, she said she wants it as a peg dog. I thought, well, good lord. That's a big tall order, but I'm always up for a challenge. You know, I'll train a tom cat to retrieve a pheasant if you pay me. So just watch this. A tiny little dog, inch and a half by his legs. Look at that. Brilliant. Absolutely good. But again, all to do with the boxes. It all revolves around the boxes. And that's what I wanted to show you today. It's something that I've taken on board and uh, uh, it works. And uh, if anyone wants to find any more about these boxes, we, uh, at the side of our tent there, where it says Flintwood Gun Dogs, we have a little demonstration. You can bring your dogs in. Shane will show you how it works. And uh, in fact, we even, uh, I, I had 50 made. I, 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 I'm selling them for exactly what I, I had them made for because I don't want to be, make any money on them at all. All I'm doing is helping people because you can make your life a lot easier by using these boxes. It sounds stupid, there's nothing to it, is there? There's no magic to it, but it's psychological. It's all psychological. If all those dogs you bought out, you can see the progression from one and the, then the other, how long they've been on them. Uh, I'm not going to say that you'd have to uh, uh, stay on the boxes for the rest of your life because you've got to work them off the boxes. In fact, I don't know if the gent gentleman's here today, but a true story. Um, he rang me up a couple of weeks ago. He said, John, he said, the Labrador you sold me, uh, uh, I trained on the boxes, and it's a year old. And it was a very, very boisterous Labrador, a great big thing. And uh, we trained on the boxes, and uh, it, took, it took very readily to the boxes. Anyway, uh, I, uh, after I trained, I said, you better take a box home with you and continue with his training. So he took the box home with it, and uh, he took the dog to work one day. And uh, he was out in the yard, and he had the box here, and he sat this Labrador on the box. And for some, so it, 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 his attention was taken away, and uh, he was away from the dog for nearly an hour. And then he thought, Christ, I, 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 I forgot I put the bloody dog on the box. He went back and the dog was still sat on the box. So the dog was on that box for an hour. So that is how it is. It seems that it's imprinted in them if you use the boxes in the beginning. So uh, that's that bit. I'm going to continue now to
to give you a little demonstration of a few more dogs. Okay, we're back with the, the more mature dogs now. Believe me, if you knew just how difficult that spaniel was that was on the boxes, the spaniel called Jag, you'd be really, really surprised that that's now quite obedient, retrieving things and coming back to you. Because believe me, we never thought that would happen. Now this is another dog called Boss. Now Boss just happens to be the father of that dog, Dag. And this dog wasn't the easiest dog in the world. It was owned by a, a lady who's a good trainer, but believe me, this dog was a real, real handful. And it needed somebody with the facilities and the ability, such as John, to be able to bring the best out of this dog. Now, it's still got a few problems, and we continuously work on those problems to try and get over it. You see the way it hunts nice and close, goes straight through the cover, its eyes on, on John. It's a very difficult dog when it was a, a young a young lad. He's, he's still not two years old. Quietly walking towards that pot. Now, please believe me, no harm comes to any pigeons, but watch this. There goes the pigeon, and he watches it away. Not any attempt whatsoever to get that pigeon as it flew. Believe me, this was a very difficult thing to get into. If you go back six months ago, that dog would have leapt in the air to have grabbed that pigeon. We had a, John's had to work really hard on him to, to get him like this. It's nice and fluent, works the cover. This dog's yet to fill trial, it will fill trial probably this year. But we don't bring these dogs out and compete with them until we're fully satisfied. Now here he goes again, he knows there's something inside him. Comes back to John, quietly goes up. Watches it away. See that pigeon struggling right underneath his nose with no attempt to actually peg that at all. Now, this is something that's not natural to the dog. Naturally, the dog wants to grab the pigeon, but trained to leave it alone. So it was a particular problem beforehand, but now we've, we've sort of got over that. The other problem we had with him is his, his retrieving. He would retrieve a dummy, okay, but when he came back to you, he was reluctant to hand it over. Here we go again. There's another another pot, he looks down there, there goes the pigeon, the way it goes. Off back to John's kennels, still interested in around it. This is all basic discipline. Keeps very close to John as you notice, it doesn't run off. Pulls him back. Here he has a little look under the thing there, there it is. He knows it's in there alright. Knocks it down, there goes the pigeon. No harm to the pigeon, he watches it away. Now once we get a dog to this level of training, we can then start working on getting it ready for the shooting field. But you can't do one before the other. You've got to get the basic discipline, because otherwise once you go on to the shooting field, you're not in a position to get any discipline into the dog. So you've got to get your training right first. Now we've got some other dogs coming out now. We've got a, a little liver and white spaniel called Boo. And there's another one here, another little white spaniel. She's a Phil Tryon Willer. And she is the mother of that dog called Dag, so we've got the, the sire and the dam here. She's a field trial winner, she moves us just a yard then in anticipation, all sat patiently waiting for their name to be called. He calls in Gilly, walks quietly into him. The others sit and wait. Now remember, this is a completely foreign environment to these dogs. There's a lot of scent on these ground from the ferrets and one thing or another beforehand. These are not performance dogs, they're shooting dogs. They're not used to this, they're used to the shooting field. Very much alien to them. All people around, they probably haven't seen this amount of people ever before. Of course, Penny in, sits her up, now he knows the boss. Quietly sits there, waiting instruction. He calls Boo into him. Again, Boss Seals sits there quietly. In comes Gilly, not looking too enthusiastic. Thinks, come on, let's do something more interesting. I want to go on the hunt a bit. There goes the dummy. Each of the dogs recognise the dummy. 
But then their eyes go straight back on John, waiting for instruction. What's he going to do? Everything's done quietly and at the handler's pace. He calls Penny into him, sits her up, sends her back to the dummy. The others sit there perfectly. Now believe me, they all would be desperate to go and collect that. That's part of their instinct, but they sit there. They've been trained to wait. She's had a few retrieves now. She's, the others are probably thinking, she's had her go more than enough. Who's he calling in now? He calls in Boo. Then he moves an inch. Did you see what he did there? She moved, so he didn't like that, so he took her straight back to the spot she was originally sat on. Sat her back up. You don't do that unless I instruct you to. So she sat there nice and quietly. There's no rough stuff. Just quietly sits her there. Get her used to the fact that you do what I tell you. You don't move until I tell you. Tosses the dummy right beside her, and that's an enormous temptation. Now, he won't let her have that dummy until she moves off the spot back to him. It would be just too easy for her to accept that she's going to get everything. Now, she looks a little bit hesitant there because she wants to make sure she gets this right. She realised she'd done wrong beforehand. She brings it straight back to him. But sometimes, you see, we, we allow these dogs, often people say, oh, we don't want it jumping up, but sometimes we allow these dogs to jump up to us because we want to get these dogs into us. It's not that you'd want to do it if you're in your finest clothes out in the shooting field, but when we train them, we want to get them into us, get them familiar with us, get them to come close into us so we can then work on that delivery. We don't want it to keep its head away from us, refusing it to get given to us. We want to get the dog into us. Tosses dummies all around the dogs. You see how they quietly sit there. Believe me, the, the discipline as a rabbit skin dummy, they seem to be more attractive than the normal ones. Directly in front of Penny, knocks them about. You don't hear them shouting, making too much noise, making too much fuss. They know not to move. If they do move, they'll be put straight back to where they started from. Quietly goes around and picks all the dummies up. If you want to come and talk to us afterwards over in the tent, just by the side here. If you've got any questions about your own dog, please come over and have a chat with us. John or Shane will be able to assist you. Quietly walks away and calls all the dogs towards him. He's got a little more hunt now. They're going to work that cover, busy, in the cover. Each one terrified that the other one's going to find something before they do. Work at it all, still very close to him. Working around, blows the whistle, and they all, all four stop. Brings them all over like a right gaggle, aren't they? Like boss, freelance, and a little bit there. They all work the cover out, all keeping around him. Of course, on the, blows the whistle, and they all stop. All stopping, they're all having a look around as well. They're expecting something to be thrown or or shot. Moves them back into the cover. Now, some of you may have a spanner. Now, how difficult it is to get one spanner to do any of this. Never mind have four doing it all. Stops them all. They sit up and they watch him away. He calls Penny in, and he tosses the dummy right past the other three Spaniels, walks her away. He's very confident these three dogs are going to stay there because he knows he's turned his back on them, so he must be confident. If he was training a, a younger dog, he wasn't confident, he would tell you never to turn your back on the dog. The dog waits with anticipation, again doesn't move until he gives an instruction. See how he's tempting the dog with his hand, then he eventually gives it the command, go back. The dog goes back, picks it up and runs straight past its three kennel mates, and believe me, that, that's upsetting them. They'd like to be in on the action. Brings the other three into him. He's 
are all still relatively young dogs, even Johnny. Penny's not that old, the others yes, are all yeah. either less than two or up to, up to three years old. I'm going to slip these dogs on leads. You may notice earlier when we were on the boxes there was another spaniel, that's a clumber spaniel. So we've seen a cocker spaniel, these are three English Springer spaniels and we saw a clumber spaniel. So these clumbers are quite popular with shooting people because they're a little bit slower, they're not quite so hot-headed. And sometimes when people go out, especially rough shooting, they want a dog that, dog that moves a little bit slower. Anyway, that's the um, end of our demonstration. Thank you very much. Give all the dogs a round of applause and John as well, please.